Hello everyone, in this video I will be going over how to make your renders look much better and overall just make them look better. So to achieve this um, you're going to be needing to use the compositing tab in your blender software. So if we head over here to your if we head over here to your render settings everything looks pretty good. Honestly, you really don't need to have your samples that high, so I'm just going to set it to 64. Um, make sure you don't actually have a denoiser on in the denoising tab for your rendering. I usually make sure that the seed is just on, have this timer on, an animated seed. That doesn't really matter though. Um, so yeah, low stamp count does not really matter. I'm going to render this out right now. This is with no compositing, so no no effects added, just the plain old default render. Okay, now you can see is we are done this short render. It looks completely terrible. We'll put this in slot, we'll say slot two. Next, so first thing to do, you wanna go to your layer properties down here and then enable denoising data. This, in my opinion, and most people's opinion who haven't heard of this one, is the best way to denoise your images, any render, anything. Enable this, right? So you go back up here to your compositing tab. If you don't have that there already, just hit the plus, general, compositing, hit compositing. Another thing people don't realize is sometimes the compositing process can take a little while. It's a little resource heavy on your PC. Hit N to open this tab up on the side and enable OpenCL if you haven't already. Basically what OpenCL is, is just like a GPU accelerator. It'll use your GPU to composite the images and it'll work much better than just using your CPU. So what we do down here, I'm just gonna hit fit, make sure this fits the whole screen. I'm gonna close that. Oh. Oops. I'm gonna re-render it with the denoising data. There we go. So if we go back here to compositing, we got this right here and we have our denoising data. So I'm just gonna click control space to come into this area much easier. So first thing you wanna do, add a denoising node. Boom slap that right there see everything looks pretty smudged doesn't really look too good right so what you want to do is you want to take the denoising normal plug this into the normal of the denoiser boom now you can see it becomes slightly more sharpened and then we add the albedo boom there you go so now it uses that information to content like to give more detail to the image. Give the computer some information before it denoises and it'll create a better looking image. Better than using OptiX. So yeah, don't use OptiX before doing this. So here we have the noisy image right here, right? That looks kind of terrible, washed out. And then we enable the denoiser that looks so much better. Just for 64 samples, that's not that long. It only took like, I don't know, 30 seconds to render, right? So I'm just gonna move this over, right? Move this over here. Now, if you, to this is where you can take your renders to the next level. It's where you make or break it. I mean, not really, it's where you make it look good. So first you take the glare node, right? You plug this in here. Oh, I accidentally made two. So you take the image, give the glare node the image data, right? You take, uh, for in my opinion, I'm just gonna take the quality to high, right? Keep this on streaks, set the iterations to max, just drag all the way to the right, which is five. Make the mix one, right? So that separates the glare from the image. And then make the threshold, let's say 0.25. So that'll just limit the amount that can be a glare, right? So, if you want to see how your glare looks so far, you can plug that into the viewer node. It'll composite much quicker with the OpenCL, and that's what that looks like, right? 
So, so now I'm just gonna put the original image back into the viewer node, right? And let's duplicate this by clicking Shift D. No, yeah, Shift D. Boom, plug this in, plug the image data into this glare node. Change it from streaks to fog glow. Keep that mix on one, right? But let's change the threshold and allow more to be a part of the fog glow. Let's change this to 0 0.04. And I'll change the size to nine for this one. Bring that to the max, right? And then this is the next step where we add all this stuff in together composite it all together right so take a mix node mix RGB right make it add it'll look white for a second take your first glare node plug this in here and you'll let that load and now you already see that looks okay it's looking better and you add another mix node or you can just duplicate this one boom and then plug this one in and this kind of just adds um, a bloom effect, kind of like Eevee, except you don't have the bloom effect native into Cycles, it's only in Eevee, would you have that? And then you can mess around with these numbers, so you can set this anything above 1, any number, change that to 3, change that to 2, something like that. You can just mess around with different numbers, see what looks best for you. Say, yeah, that doesn't look too bad, I mean, we could mess around with it a little later, but say we just stick with that save your uh, file and then next thing you can do um, just to add some like chromatic aberration which is common in like most cameras or at least cheap cameras right so I don't know what is it distortion lens distortion yeah bring that in there click fit boom and then down here the dispersion you can change that we can just do point say zero five you don't want too, too much. You don't want too less, you know. See, that might be a little, that's not really too noticeable. It, it really depends what kind of effect you're going for. So, let's see what 2.5 looks like. So when you use fit, it'll, it'll kind of like stretch your screen and it'll make that effect a little more noticeable. So I might make it a little less. We'll just say point, let's see, point 0.1. That doesn't look too bad, actually. I think I might stick with that. So yeah, that's pretty much the basic node setup that I use all the time. You can change a bunch of other things, mess with the different settings, but that's basically it. So if I just exit out of here, you can see both of them side by side. Okay, yeah, you can see the difference. So this is the same render samples, same render samples here but with the denoising node and all the glares. How, like this, yeah, like the difference is amazing. Like you can obviously tell you wouldn't want to use this noisy image, right? Compared to this beautiful, fully composited image. You really don't need to have too much samples to get something that looks like a final product. So yeah, that was basically the whole purpose of this video, just to show you guys how crazy this is like i really didn't realize this to now till now but yeah if you guys want more helpful videos like that leave a comment down in the comment section just saying what other things you'd like to see from my channel stuff like that so yeah um that was pretty much the video if you guys liked it then you know like subscribe do all that stuff so peace out